about Wikidata and its current state and why we have to work on it in the future for like 10-15 minutes and then do a QA. Um, for some of the data people to do it. Can I have a short raise of hands? Who of you is already familiar with Wikidata or does cool stuff on Wikidata and so on? Yay! <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so let's start with what have we achieved so far. We built a really amazing community. Um, that is, in the past two years, I think our biggest achievement. We have a community that is, I would say, sensible and working towards making it really amazing for them. So thank you for all. 13,000 um, is the number of editors that we had over the last month, which I think is a really impressive number for a project that's often kind of pushed away as, yeah, our own boss in there anyway. <coughs> we built software. Um, we built the groundwork for storing a lot of data. There's still a lot to do, but we've done the groundwork. And we built a lot of cool apps and tools on top of it. I won't go into some of those now, but it's by no means exhaustive. And you will come across them if you browse the little data, for example. The first one, Reasonator. I'm sure many of you have heard of Reasonator during the conference already. Um, it's basically a nicer view on top of the data that we data that we data has. It can also do nice things like generate you a small text based on the data, but what is much more important, I think, is giving a nice view, a human view of you of the data that we have. <laughs> the next thing um, I want to highlight is uh, the temporal spatial display, uh, which gives you a timeline of events that are on the data and also puts them on that. So for example here, um, I think it was the American Civil War and not the individual battles of it. Or there was a session here uh, yesterday about history of India, which again can create the data and give you a very nice timeline of events. For example here, optic expeditions. Or we have games uh, that help edit the data in a very nice and easy way. This one um, is emerging and basically shows you two items on the data that might be on the same thing or not and asks you to decide if that's the case or not. And if you say yes, those are about the same thing, you can merge those items to keep the difference between, for example. There are a lot more on these games. Check them out if you might not. Another thing we have is a tool called QLabel, which lets you use Wikidata to internationalize websites, basically anywhere in the world. In this case, a restaurant review that's marked up with Wikidata identifiers, and then you can switch it to, for example, German. This is already possible now, thanks to Wikidata. <coughs> All we have the top page. How will you look at This is just one of his tools and he's 
as you surely know, one of the most prolific tour writers around the area. So we thought a lot of any ecosystem, basically. Now let's look at some numbers on the data itself. <coughs> this is the number of items, <coughs> the number of labels and items. As you can see, most of our items have one label, so in one language. That means there are still way too many items that cannot really be identified in another language. Um, we need to fix that. It's not better, <coughs> but there's still a lot of work to be, to be done. <coughs> this shows the number of statements on items. And again, nearly half of our items have zero or one statement. So that is also not yet enough to make them really useful. But also here, we're getting a little better over time. <coughs> and this is the one graph that pains me. <laughs> um, this shows references for statements. Uh, on the data. And as you can see, there's a lot of statements that either do not have a source or are referenced to some other Wikimedia project, indicating that the data has been imported from there. In order for Wikidata to be really trusted and used, we need to make this graph quite different. And I think this will be one of the biggest challenges we have. Now, let's look at Wikidata compared to some other projects. In terms of new editors per month, Wikidata is project number four, after English comments and expanded In terms of active editors, so more than five edits per month, Wikidata again is number four, after English comments and German increase. Very active editors, again, we did as number four after English, comments, and German Wikipedia. I think those are pretty impressive things for two year old work. <coughs> to sum it up, we built a project that makes human knowledge machine readable, widely accessible, and easily shareable. Which I think we can applaud. So, what are we going to do? Over the next month, we will be releasing a lot of new features. <coughs> First one will be redirects, so that you can actually redirect one item to another to indicate that they are the same. We will roll out improved suggestions when you edit. So right now we only get suggestions while you add the main statement. Coming up is suggestions also when you add the source or a qualifier. We will add more system projects. The next one is Wiki News. We will add support for badges. Uh, thanks to Vina. Where is Vina? Um, so that you can store things like this article is featured on English Wikipedia or this article is a good article on German Wikipedia and so on. We will add a new video feature called an other project sidebar that basically lets you link to the other Wikimedia projects in the sidebar of the Wikimedia project. So say you are on English Wikipedia and in the sidebar you can have links just like sites to other language version that lead to the other projects, like the media comments or the source as well. Can be configured for projects as well. Um, done by TT, where are you? Yay! <coughs> we will release more data types. The next one that's coming up is monolingual types, so that you can store, for example, the um, motto of a country and associate the language with it in 
suspicious of this. Um, and we will be releasing statements on properties. That's complicated. Um, but basically what you can do then is indicate that the property should be used only with certain values, for example. Um, so, um, or that a certain property should only follow a certain regulation. Like you have the uh, IMDb identifier for, for movies, and there's a certain pattern they follow, and you can indicate that. This will make it a lot easier to keep our data clean and uh, maintain it. <coughs> so, this is near term. Um, at the same time, we have two interns working on documentation and outreach to make the data much easier to understand. which I'm sure you're all aware it's an issue. Um, so that is in progress. One thing they're doing right now is, for example, propose a new design for the main page. So if you have a thing for design and presenting content in a nice way, please give them feedback. Um, it's already that a lot of time. <coughs> Another thing that's going to be in review is uh, simple queries so that you are then able to say, give me everything that has country greater than four time. Or give me everything that is a continent. This is going to be a review of the foundation and we'll hopefully be about to do um, We're working on usability, mainly to a new design. Um, here's a mock-up. Um, Basically, what you uh, see is that settings move to the side, the identifiers move to the side. We're thinking about adding a discussion uh, piece once we have a flow to show if um, there's anything is being discussed about this item. Um, maybe related items that could be able to do. An image to help you figure out what this um, item is about. And the same section as you know. <coughs> the bigger thing we are working on now uh, is support for Wikimedia Commons so that you can store structured information about files or comments on comments. This will make it much easier to, in a structured way, store things like the license of an image or what it is about and so on. This will allow us to build a lot of new tools to make comments so much better. <coughs> now, we are absolutely not done yet, and there's a lot of stuff still missing, obviously. Um, in part from the community side, and in part from the development side. From the development side, one thing that is really needed and holding us back at the moment is access to data from all the three items. So right now you can only access data from the item that is associated with this article. So if you're on English Wikipedia article about Berlin, you can only access the data from Berlin and not for example Germany. We need to fix this. Because this will make a lot of uh, more applications on Wikipedia, for example, possible. The other thing that is holding us back is support for units. <laughs> um, so right now you cannot, for example, or the height of a mountain on Wikipedia because we can't handle height. Again, something we need to fix because it's holding us back on Wikipedia. There's a lot of data need for process that needs to be A bit more long term, complex queries as opposed to simple queries. Um, complex queries will help us, for example, build list articles on uh, Wikipedia. That is still a bit of data. And adoption. Uh, adoption, especially on Wikipedia, on big Wikipedias. This is really important for us to change over the next year because if we have more integration in Wikipedia, 
we have more eyes around there, we have more support to maintain it, we have more support to, especially support to smaller Wikipedias. Um, so we really need to work on making it possible to use more of the data in the Wikipedias and encourage that, support that. For small development and for the community. And I hope you will all have that for the next year. Yeah, some of you might already have seen this picture in my uh, keynote. And this shows geo coordinates in Wikidata. And it's just one example of how useful Wikidata can be in the future. Because we can provide all of this information to the Wikipedia, to the system project, and anyone else out there in a machine readable, usable way. When you compare this to the Wikipedia's, there is a lot less, especially on small Wikipedia's. And we need to support that to provide more people more access to more knowledge. And with that, I would like to switch to the Q&A, actually. Um, maybe Daniel, Dana, and uh, Jasper want to come to the front and then we take questions. Uh, 
Um, the other thing you might, um, people might be interested in is weekly summary, which gives you a short summary at the end of the week of things that happen around the data on your publication to subscribe to it. It's also sent to the mail list, or to their accounts, and so on. Yes? Okay, um, there's a perceived, on, on English Wikipedia, there's a perceived limitation where current format of Wikidata is actually pr forcing a one-size-fits-all on certain items inside English Wikipedia. I'm wondering, is there any room for either extra statements or extra fields to go for the variations in language usage in the English language world? So like you've got Ingvar for Australia, you've got British English, you've got American English. I'm wondering whether that particular variation, and there are other variations between English-speaking countries, whether there's been any consideration for extra fields for some of the more harder, difficult areas. Um, I'm not quite sure what exactly you mean. Um, but if you, if you mean about entering the data in different languages, and also languages... No, not the same language, but variations around yes. the planet. The thing is that yes. there, there so, are... So that is very possible. You can use... It's not very nice at the moment because we do not have language formats, but we will be working on that. And then it, if you, so you will have British English, for example. Um, you can already enter data and label of the description of British English. It's currently granted not nice to use with data in British English. Um, we need to work on language formats for that, so that if there is a label in American English, for example, it will just show that. Yeah, because the problem is that there are some variations between whether it's in the same set of the English language, but there are different usages, different spellings. Yes. Um, it's just quite con some concern to some editors in English Wikipedia who have gone, they've seen the effect of Wikidata on an article they've been dealing with, and they think, uh-uh, it doesn't look good. It would be very interesting for us to see properly the examples of this. And Maybe we should talk about that. Maybe we we'll speak after. But yeah. I, I just think it's a... I understand that you're always adding extra room for other statements or variations, but it just seemed one yeah. that jumps out that there really needs addressing fairly early on. Okay, that's for the concrete examples after the session? Yep. Cool. Thank yes. you. Well, following on from that, one of the things I'm particularly concerned about is that you've got a wonderful database in, in Wikidata of all sorts of information. It's fabulous the size of it, and a great batch of it huge. I'm concerned that we're not actually using it. On English Wikipedia, there's so many possibilities for being able to use a, a piece of centralised data. Yeah. It, it seems to me that there, should, there ought to be somewhere where you've got people actually evangelising on English Wikipedia. Because there's a lot of resistance. There's a whole load of things that's going to be overcome in order to be able to use it. I want to be able to say to people, okay, I want, I want all the, I want, to, I want to get all the, the, the composers. We were born between 1700 and 1799. If I, if I got that list on access, I could write a query like that, I'd have the data. I want to be able to do that on English Wikipedia. And, you know, how have you got people actually on the projects, especially for me, English Wikipedia, who are going to be saying, yes, let's use it for this, let's use it for that? Right. Your problem is not limited to just the English Wikipedia. And, uh, and, uh, and there's nothing technically that stops uh, that stops uh, it, uh, but uh, what we what we're really talking what we're really talking about is that uh, local communities uh, there's a little bit of inertia in terms of uh, getting a consensus in favor of using the, using Wikidata, especially <coughs> came to phase two that was not so simple to implement. Uh, so uh, that's a, this is a social thing that we may be able to discuss later. It is. I, I think one, or there are several aspects to this. One is uh, you want lists. We cannot do that yet. Yeah. Uh, there, we, sh we should <coughs> be able to do this very soon, but it's not there yet. Another thing is that technically building info boxes based on Wikidata is not as simple yet as it should be. Um, we are working on making the raw interface better. Um, but and the third thing is, I think the larger Wikipedia is, and the better it actually works, and the more established processes it has, the harder it is to change anything. The smaller wikis adopt much quicker. I'm sure. Twelve months ago, a friend of mine and I wrote a little module to, to, to replace hash property, mm -hmm. so that it reads things in the properly labelized labels, disambiguated, multiple 
state and teach and turning links, and it sat there for 12 months because nobody has been sitting there used, trying to use it in info boxes. Mm -hmm. The implementation, as you say, is actually trivial. But where's, where's the actual support? Where are the, where are the enthusiasts for using Wiki, Wiki data in the project driving it along? It doesn't, it, uh, without me wanting to be rude, because I'm, I'm part of it as, I'm, as well, but yeah. we seem to be focusing inwards. This is bike shedding for me. It's, um, it's, it's not yeah. the number of editors, it's the number of users we need to be fighting for. Right. So um, I, I agree that this is true now, but for a long time we had to focus a bit on ourselves to get to the state where we are at now, and also to not oversell and hide Wikipedia too much towards the editors, especially in Wikipedia. Um, if we hide it too much and then things go wrong, that will backfire on us. Um, and I think we are at a stage now where, where this can change, but it's a slow process. Can you say something about the Russian Wikipedia as an example here? Because it all sounds quite negative. We have yeah. brilliant examples of this already happening actually on big Wikipedia, so please. Yeah, so uh, we learned, I think, uh, yesterday or uh, Friday, and on the Russian Wikipedia, they already built uh, quite huge infoboxes just from the data, so there are use cases more than smaller projects, but um, this would be really, really cool, you would have to look at it. They, they just insert a template without any parameters and get all the data, there's such an info box, and it works really well, and I think this is easier to implement on the smaller projects, because they do not have those processes and so on, but um, I think one day we will also be able, if we have more references on our statements and so on, to convince also the bigger Wikipedia to use our data. I think there is also some work to do from our side, but it would also help us a lot, uh, a lot if you promote the data on those uh, bigger Wikipedia. And also, I think it's, a, it's like Wiki Project, US Roads, like they're like very dedicated, but like their info box works with it. some 800 pages that use that template on Commons, so or should we do some other parts? So Commons right now does not have access to the data on the data, just to the sightings. Um, this means this is the way to connect these things now, and once the data access is in place, we can, replay, we can remove that and make the... Um, so, so the Russian Wikipedia that was mentioned here has more access to Wikidata yes. than Commons yes. has. Yes. So, what, so when will Commons on? reach that, that point that the Wikipedia is on today? Yeah. Is there um, a schedule for that? The, the, the problem with that is that the uh, Commons is structured differently and it only really makes sense once you can't access data from arbitrary items. And we need to have no reason to check for that. Um, that's basically it's far from a technical detail that is well, seemingly trivial but it takes time. So how much time? So is it end of this year or yes. end of next year? Yeah, end of this year seems realistic. Yeah. I would say early next year. <laughs> so, so I, I learned that already now, if I remove the interwiki links from a page on Commons, 
They are filled in by yes. Yes. So that is the part font has, but not the same. But another detail in this particular page is that it also lists what free software is called in various languages, which is really a duplication of the data in yes, uh, Wikidata. Yes, it is. Totally and we need so to which, fix this. Which yeah. way should that go? It should go towards using Wikidata, but it's not possible yet. So, so for now, this is, this is fine. This so is, good. is there any point in using this template on Wikidata uh, in more pages on on commons than the 800? I mean, 800 pages. Well, it gives you it gives you okay. access to the data as as a browser, right? Like if I browse on this category and I want to know a bit more, then I can I can jump to Wikidata. That's basically what it does, and it, that's fine. But is it um, if I if I add this template to 100 or Hundred thousand more pages on Commons now. Is that a waste of time? Because before the end of this year, there will be a better. If, you, if you're talking about hundred thousand, then yeah, probably. Well, it is definitely useful to crossing the pages on Commons for the inspected Wikidata items now. The, I would probably suggest to do it the other way around. Go to Wikidata and link the item to uh, the respective page on Commons. I'm not sure how. Useful it is on a large scale to the offices. It's useful for having a link there that you can click. Right. Uh, but beyond that, I don't know. So this is one example where apparently there is a template and it, somebody has sorry. used it on 800 pages and I don't know if this is something bad that will go away or something good that we should... It is good for now. So, so um, would, it's so not necessary to extend it on a large scale. scale. I, think I need necessary. to know if this is going up or down. I don't know if, it, if people add more of this, but it's, anyway, if we're running out of time, and um, we can discuss this a bit more uh, afterwards. <coughs> Thank you so much, everyone. that the information flow is not perfect here sometimes um, and it was on very short notice so this talk has been rescheduled several times to several places including to one where I am sitting on a plane to Luxembourg this afternoon and now it's here so what should have been here until mid yesterday was Gerard's talk who is actually now here um, and he just gave his talk in the other session I think if you were interested in this story um, I hope you didn't miss it so I'm going to talk about Wikidata Toolkit. Uh, if Gerard wants to do a lightning, so actually, who, who expected Gerard to talk now? Okay, two, two people. I mean, maybe Gerard can, can give at the end of the session still a lightning overview of you. I have presentations. Okay, good. Okay, so Gerard has been rescheduled. Maybe we can announce that later on. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Java library for working with Wikidata. Now, don't leave the room yet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to talk about a lot of things which are not Java specific at all. But uh, just a quick show of hands, who has programmed in Java in his life? Oh, well, that's not so bad. Uh, who then decided not to do it anymore? No. <laughs> uh, that's not just cross languages. I think there are many things to learn here that are not specific to Java. Um, Wikidata. I, you know about Wikidata. That's a fairly old photograph of the team which worked, was in place then. Uh, 285 language editions are connected and now. It's licensed about two years. And you basically have heard all this uh, in, in other talks. Um, but I want to give you a bit more details also on the technical level so you can understand what's actually going on there. So Wikidata, first of all, for you who want to work with it, is actually a wiki and it's a media wiki. So it runs on media wiki as all the Wikipedias do as common stars. And so basically, essentially, it's organized in pages like Wikipedia. The difference is that the pages are not only text pages, like uh, the pages we have on Wikipedia, uh, but they are also data pages. But technically, it's really like a wiki where some pages just can't be edited in plain text. That's important to understand if you're working with the content. Um, now, each data page is about one entity, as we call it. An entity is just a fancy academic word for thing. 
Uh, so <laughs> it's something, right? So uh, uh, we currently support two types of entity, the properties and the items. They have their separate namespaces and pages. Um, in general, mainly when we talk about things on Wikidata, we talk about items. So for example, Paris, London, Barbican, uh, Charles Darwin, they, have, they are items, things that exist somehow, uh, and which we want to talk about and which we want to pull data about. Properties are much rarer uh, a kind of entity which are used to express relationships between items. So they say something like population or mother of, or um, country or call in a location or birth date. You get the ideas. Um, all of these are identified by opaque IDs which don't have any language relationship. You also have seen that. So there are 242, P31, P is for property, Qs, QIDs are for items. And everything happens form based, of course. Um, now, what's Wikidata Toolkit? Now, Wikidata Toolkit is a um, project which was created to help you work with the data because it's an awful lot of data and it's not always easy to do that. I mean, there are many ways to work with the data actually, but um, if, you, uh, if you want to get access to all the data and do something with it, it's actually not so easy. Um, it's uh, written in Java simply because that seemed to be a language to reach a lot of people. I know in our community not so much as in other communities, but it's, it's fairly easy to use and it's not, not such a bad thing overall if you think about it. Um, the goal of the project really was uh, to support programming with Wikidata content. So to say, okay, it's not just about you know, fetching a uh, fact from one page or getting access on a particular wiki of the, media, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation to some data, but maybe you just want to get all the data and do your own work with it, do something creative that you can't, can't do otherwise without having hold of all of the data. And of course, working with all of the data is difficult if you only have web API access in JavaScript. Um, so that was the idea that provides some more heavyweight like backend thingy which you can use. Uh, and it's really a library, it's for programmers, it's not an application yet. Um, another goal of Wikidata Toolkit is also, the name is Wikidata Toolkit, to really support arbitrary sites based on the same software. So there are already people running today media wikis that use the same technology uh, to gather data, but which are not Wikidata. And you may also want to work with this data somehow. And all, all of the service architecture we are talking about here, infrastructure, is not really available for them because they are not as big and important as Wikidata. So this is also a, a motivation we have. Um, all of this, of course, uh, gratefully acknowledged here is about uh, uh, Wikimedia Foundation supporting this development in an IEG, uh, uh, which runs for another two months or so. So this is actually an ongoing project. We are not quite in the middle anymore, but at two thirds, I would say. So there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, and uh, I'm not quite giving you the final results yet. What we already did is, a uh, full implementation that allows you to represent all the data in Java. So you need to have some kind of representation, right, to work with it. Um, you have uh, processing for media wiki dump files to extract the data, so you can get all the data from the dump files that you don't have to pause them yourself or decompress them yourself. You just say, give me the data, and it gives you the data. Uh, it also will do the downloading for you, and it can export these things to other formats already. Um, what we are currently working on is to support further internal formats, not talking about that in detail, but also uh, local storage and queries is very important, so you can store the data on your disk, have random access very fast, work with it as if it were a database that you can just access. Uh, and also maybe uh, help with API access, so there's a Java uh, bot framework support for MediaWiki that you can also use to write bots in Java. Would be nice to connect that with Wikidata to work with Wikidata. Okay, so this is just a quick overview of the project. I'm going to give you more practical examples of that. But really, if you want to work with Wikidata data in any context, where you, especially as a programmer, you really have to understand what the data looks like. You can't just say, okay, that, that you look at the page and it says population, and this is the number, and it's kind of clear to you know. You have to understand what the data structures are and just see what actually the format is that these things come in. And so I would like to spend some time explaining this, and as I said, this might be of general interest because it's not just for, for this particular project. So, and I think actually not, no talk has really done that yet. So uh, when you look at the content of Wikidata, you see three types of things currently on the item pages on Wikidata. So here I have the item page of item Q42, which by complete coincidence happens to be uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Uh, 
And you see at the top of the page there's a kind of a header which uh, has a lot some string type information in it. Then there comes a lot of statements like the date of birth here. And at the very bottom you have links to other sites currently. I mean with the redesign of the UI, maybe this is organized in a slightly different way, but there will still be these three components to the page. And well, the top of the page here, these labels are what we call terms. So there are three types of terms. The, the label, the actual label that you see here, Douglas Adams, a uh, brief description, English humorist and English writer humorist in this case, and aliases, which give you alternative ways to refer to the thing. These three types of string information can be stored in all languages. So they are here shown in English because that's how I was locked in when I took the screenshot. But in principle, you could have versions for every language there. And they're mainly used for, for labeling things. If you want to show somebody a result, you don't want to show Q42 only, you want to have a name. And also for searching, that's why we have the alias. So if you type something into the search box and it's not quite a label, but something related, then you should still be able to find the item. And the, the description mainly is used for this ambiguation. So if there are 100 things called Douglas Adams, you want to have some kind of hint to select the right one. So this is not really source data. We don't have references for this or anything. It's just something the community picks to be able to talk about these things and to, to refer to them and to represent them to humans in a certain way. Um, as I said, they have a lot of languages. And these languages are actually based on the user set languages. It's different from the Wikipedia languages. We have already talked about that in the Q&A briefly. So you can have a can set a user interface to British English or to Canadian English or to American English. Um, but of course, there's only one English Wikipedia. So we actually have quite a bit more languages than Wikipedia projects are around. Uh, the thing at the very bottom then are the site links. The site links are links to other Wikipedia projects, uh, mainly Wikipedia, but also Wiki Voyage now and uh, Wiki, uh, uh, Media Commons, uh, which connect some uh, of the items to articles about this item, about exactly this item, right, on other projects, which is very important for us in order to determine what the item actually is about, because then you can go there, read the article, and see, oh yes, this is what we are talking about here, uh, without, hopefully without ambiguity. Um, this is also why there's basically a one-to-one -one relationship between articles on Wikipedia and items on Wikidata. So you can't have many articles on English Wikipedia associated with one item. And conversely, a certain item can only be belonging to one article on, uh, uh, and a certain article can only belong to one item. Uh, okay. Now, but now to the statements, which is actually the most, the richest part of all the data are these statements. And you have seen them a bit already. Uh, Basically, the statements are built by taking a property, giving it a value, and hopefully also setting some references. So it's easy to understand what that means. Date of birth, in this case, Douglas Adams, uh, date of birth was 11th March in 1952. Uh, however, in many cases, statements are actually a bit more complex than this simple form. And you have additional information. For example, here we have the statement about the spouse of Douglas Adams, which is property spouse with value Jane Bells, that's all right. But then we have additional information about this thing, which we say here. Uh, namely, that the marriage started on 25th of November 1999 and ended with Adam's death and uh, death on 11th May. Uh, and also, if I unfold the reference, I get more information. The reference, again, is uh, described in terms of properties and values, properties and values. So you see here, start date has a value, end date has a value. These all are properties, just like spouse is a property. And we are calling that, these things as follows. So the property is still the property of the, of the statement. There is a value here for it. But then we have kind of sub-property value things, which we call qualifiers. <coughs> they are meant to give you context information about the statement. So when we say start date 25th November 1991, we don't mean the start date of Douglas Adams, right? We mean the start date of this uh, particular uh, fact, maybe, that he was a spouse of Jane Bells, or has a spouse of Jane Bells. Uh, so this really is a way to say more about the statement itself, which is very important in many contexts. You have to say how it was obtained. Uh, references are another way of context to, to say how something was obtained, but often we want to also say what the method of measurement was, for example, with population numbers, or what kind of uh, system was used to, to, to come up with a certain value, or in which context this value is relevant. And well, the reference, again, list of property value patterns. 
So this is really the, the structure of a statement. Finally, there is something which we call a rank. I'm not going to go into this, I think, because I'm already running over time. Um, so uh, rank is about saying whether a statement is uh, just a regular statement or it has some kind of preferred status. Sometimes if you have a lot of statements about the same property, you want to mark one as preferred to make it easier for people to find. If they really want to have only one, what is the one they should do? So that's a very rough and, and partly wrong description of the thing, but uh, for now it has to serve. Um, Okay, so again, richest parts of Wikipedia's data are these statements. They have several components, a main property value pair, spouse, Jane Nelson, a list of qualifiers, property value pairs, start date, end date, whatever you want to do there. So you can arbitrary things, the community defines that, right? We don't say that there are certain qualifiers, it's just something you can add. A list of references, which are each, again, a property value uh, pair list, and then there's a rank, which may mark a statement as preferred, normal, and deprecated it is just kept for, for other purposes than uh, Now, the, the claim of the statement is actually the, the main property value pair and the qualifier. That's what we are claiming. That's what the references refer to. So the references say, Jane Belson was the spouse of Douglas Adams in this particular time frame. This is what the reference should support if, uh, if we have it like that. OK. Um, now, properties and property value pairs are uh, also something that requires a bit of explanation. So properties are items, uh, are entities, as you remember, and so they are created on pages, and when you do that, you give them a data type. It is important for us to know if it's a date, or it's a coordinate, or if it's another item, or a string, or whatever you expect there. This is important for the user interface, it's also important for search, so we need to know that. And this has to be de decided when you create a property. Once you did that, it's fixed, you can't change it anymore. It will stay like that forever. Um, there are a number of data types I already mentioned. Most of them quantity is for numerical things uh, in the future, also for units in, the, in some sense. Uh, and then there are two more things you can actually say, something special. You can omit the value and say, OK, we only know that there is a value. I, we don't really have a specific value, but we, there is a value that's quite useful for expressing some amount of incomplete data. For example, if a person, if we don't know when a person died, but it was 200 years ago that the person was born, then it may be sensible to say there is a date of death for that person, just to make sure it doesn't come up when we ask for all the living people. So that, this is a very, very weak way of expressing incomplete data, and likewise, we can have a very, very weak way of expressing some kind of completeness by saying that the property has no value. So, because you never know, right, if you are on Wikidata, it could just be incomplete. If somebody has no children, maybe it's just because nobody entered any. Uh, if somebody has no death date, maybe it's just because nobody entered it. So it may make sense to say, this person has no death date, this person has no children. And this is what you can do with this special value. Okay. So that's it. But you see, it's not quite as, as simple. Uh, as maybe a first look suggests. On the other hand, for humans, it's actually quite simple. If you look at the page and you see these entries, normally it's very clear for you what they mean. Um, but if you are a programmer and want to go through these data structures, you, you have to understand these things a bit better. So this is the structure, again, repeated in box notation, following no standard whatsoever of software engineering. So this is uh, giving you a bit of an overview. I could use UML, but it wouldn't fit the page and it wouldn't be clearer anyway. So, um, but when we say what we have on a page, we call in programming in, in the code an item document. Um, an item document contains, is about a certain item ID, and it has a list of statements. Each statement has a claim which has a property and a value. We call these things snacks. Uh, it could also have no value and just say there is some value, or it could say there's no value. Uh, and we have qualifiers, which is a list of property value pairs or other things. We have a list of references and we have a statement rank. So you see you have quite a bit of a nested data structure here already to, to uh, access this. And um, this is actually further organized in groups because we group every state, all the statements by a property. You Basically you see all the uh, statements of the same properties, they belong together. They will always stick together on the page. You can't separate them. And this is why we have this Basically, a list of groups, each contains a list of statements, each contains a claim, which may have a property value pair and a list of qualifiers and so on. So it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, now I want to show you briefly uh, 
how things can be programmed. Since you said you are not, well, part of you are Java programmers, part of you aren't, so I don't want to go into this too much and do much of a live session here. I just want to give you a feeling how programs look that are written in, in, the, uh, uh, in this toolkit, because that's basically what the talk is supposed to be about. So this is probably very hard to read from the back. Um, let me change the font. It's Eclipse is a brilliant tool to do simple things quickly, as you know. Mm. Okay, so that's a bit better. If I make it any bigger, it won't be enough on the screen to, to read a meaningful part. Okay, so this is a little program. It's as a main method, if you remember your Java classes, uh, this is how we write programs in Java. Uh, and, well, what's happening here? So this is basically the idea is that Wikidata Toolkit allows you to process a whole dump file of Wikipedia, or of Wikidata. It will automatically download it for you and it will go through every single entry of this dump, all the pages, all the items, and you can do something with them. And this is what we set up here. We say, we make a new dump processing controller for Wikidata wikis. That's how it's referred to in the foundation download sites. That's why we use this identifier. We could actually also download media with the thumbs for any other project of the foundation with this code, but that's not much more than we could do with that. Um, and we say, I want to run it offline here because I don't want to start downloading gigabytes of thumbs in this live demo. Um, now, uh, I want to process somehow my, my documents, and for this I have written a little document processor. It's a very simple class. I will show you it, it, to it in a minute. Basically, it just has one method, which is given a document and is asked to process it in some way. The idea is when I run this code, this method will be called for every single document. It will go through all the documents and process them. Uh, and I register this dump pro processor uh, or document processor with my controller. And I register something else that gives me some statistics. And then all I have to do is I have to say process most recent main dump. And what this will do is it will go to the web page of, uh, of, of MediaWiki Dumps, it will find the most recent dump that is available there, download it to your disk to cache it so it doesn't happen again, uh, and start parsing it. It's an XML file. It first decompresses it on the fly, parses the XML, finds inside the XML all the pages, parses the content of the pages, converts it into a Java model that gives you object level access to all this data that I just described in this abstract form that you see there without you having to worry about anything on this way and uh, passes this to your processor and well, hopefully the processor does something. And in my case, it does something and I call afterwards store the results because it kind of <coughs> matches results. I have five minutes left. Ooh. Um, okay, let me show you the processor. So I thought, what can I actually do here? Um, I thought, OK, let's compute the average life expectancy of notable people on Wikidata. Uh, that seemed to be somewhat reasonably interesting. And so this is, a doc this is the document processor that I registered. It has one relevant method, which is called process item document. It gets an item document. That's the yellow box from my previous slide. And it looks at it and extracts data whether it's interest uh, to see if it's interesting. This is the loop that I would like to explain to you. It goes through all the statement groups here. So it says, get the statement groups of the item document. We call them SG. We go, go through all the statement groups. Then we check if the property ID that is belonging to the statement group, so we are now going through all the statement groups which are grouped by a property. We are checking if the property which we have in this group is P569. This is actually birth date. And we check if, if the string identifier P569 is equal to the ID which the statement group has. Statement group get property get ID. Yeah, this is Java S, I know. It's a, a lot of long stuff, but uh, it makes it possible for Java to find many errors that you will only find months later if you are a PHP developer. In my experiences. So uh, what we then do, if we found such a statement group that has the right property birth date, we say, let's go through all the statements. And for all the statements, SG get statements, so we get all the statements S, we get the claim. We look at the claim of the statement, and we get the main snack. The main snack is the property value there, hopefully. Maybe it's a no value snack, maybe it's some value. We only want to have the ones where we have a value. So we check if this is a value snack. 
And if it is, we get a value. We say the value v is get thing, get main snake, get value. Now we have our value. So what we did is we found a statement that is for birthday. We find, found a value for it, which is a value object. And now we check if it's actually a time. It should be a time. I mean, you can't add anything else there. And if it's a time, we say, OK, <coughs> get the year and start, store it as a birth year of the person. So this is a, a bit of a loop. I think we will have some simplification code to just do that for you, actually, in the future. Um, but it shows nicely how you go into the structure, find something, and go out again. Okay. And so what I found here is hopefully a statement about the birth year, and I just remember the year. The rest of the date I, I throw away. I do the same with the death date. If I found both birth and death, I will record it in a, in a little array and, and store this uh, in the code. So, briefly. Now I can run this thing uh, just to show you. So now this thing is actually running. And you can see now it, it takes a dump file. I already downloaded it. And it starts to process it. And it goes through it. It has to decompress it, XML, parse it, and so on. And yeah, it's not very fast, actually. I mean, this takes a while. The, fir the first few items are the biggest ones, actually. I hope it's, yeah, OK. So now I got it. First 10,000 items have been processed in 24 seconds. So that will take a while to run, um, because we have 16 million items. Let's stop it. So um, you can do that. It takes about one to two hours, depending on your machine. Um, I said we want to develop a local format for that. And the local format is a binary format that starts to, you to store the dump files in a way that is much easier to process. And I have a different code snippet here, which uses this prototype implementation that we already have. It's not quite yet in the released version of this format. And in, if I run this, I use exactly the same processing code but I now use a different way to go through the data. And we see, OK, now things look a bit more snappy. OK, 10,000 items in four seconds. I, but there's a difference here. These are not 10,000 items of Wikidata. These are 10,000 people who have a death date. So actually, we have already processed some millions of items here um, to run through. And uh, this will hopefully terminate in a second. But uh, so we can leave this running, and I can finish my presentation in the meantime. So I talked a bit about scale. These things are a bit large. We have uh, hundreds, tens of millions of things, and you have to be aware of this if you program against it. But we try to provide support for this uh, so that you can really process things in a very quick way. Um, I'm not going to go into this. You see things grow. Everything grows. But it's not, it's not exponential. It's linear. Uh, we get um, mostly linear. Dish. So we don't think that the data sets will be exploding. And as it currently is, the whole data of Wikidata stored on my disk in a binary format, uncompressed mostly, takes less than 5 gigabytes. So for a developer, that's, that's a nice uh, piece of information, I think, because you can completely put into RAM and do something. That would be very quick. And we can already do that, but it's not in the file of the current release yet of the tool. Um, I don't have time to go through all that. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Uh, just saying that things are uh, big. But I would like to come to some conclusions. First of all, let's see if this actually is, is still running. <laughs> oh. OK, I, I do have a bit more time. So this is, this is still running. You can see that, that there are uh, 560 items, 1,000 items processed. The speed of this processing varies a bit because um, the distribution of people in the dumps is not uniform. So sometimes you scan a million items and there's no person among them, and then other times they will come one by one. And so this thing is not, uh, not uh, completely regular. But I mean, I don't have to finish, uh, wait for it to finish here. It has about 680,000 uh, in total, uh, which will finish in about 30 seconds, but I'm not going to wait for it now. For me, this was a big step forward because now you can experiment. I mean, there's a huge difference between having to wait for two hours until you get results back and having to wait for three minutes. And I think this really ho hopefully enables something. And also the example I picked here is something you can't solve with a web service, right? You can't fetch 680,000 documents via the Java JSON API. You can't just go to a Wikidata query to get that thing resolved because it won't compute lifespans for you. You have to do something more. And this is, as I hopefully have demonstrated, 
possible with less than 200 or 300 lines of code. So, conclusions. When this is ready, it writes the things into a simple CSV file where it just records for every year the average life expectancy of people on Wikipedia. And I can take this file, paste it into Google Documents and make a little graph. And here are my conclusions. <laughs> we will die. So it looks pretty gloomy, doesn't it? I mean, okay, here starting at the 1200 somehow, okay, there's a lot of noise in the data, not so many people, lifespans vary, some uncertainty is present. Um, but then it stabilizes and we see, yes, uh, at 1600, average life expectancy of notable people, more than 60 years. If we are reaching almost 70 years in the 1800, 74, I think it peaks here at 1914, and then it drops. And I mean, look at that, folks. I mean, we almost born in this decade or century, century here, we have almost no life expectancy. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure many of you are seeing what, what the reason for that is. That uh, uh, ob obviously uh, this script computes the average life expectancy of people who are dead already. And so if somebody <laughs> is born in 1980 and is dead, then the life expectancy was not so long. So we have this expected linear decline at the very end. But I think it shows that there's some interesting data. And hey, it took half an hour to, to cook this up. Uh, so, so I found that interesting. OK, so conclusions. Wikidata is uh, fascinating, unpredictable, full of unexplored potential. Be creative, do something with it. We want to provide you with tools. And it's only at this very beginning, really. Um, the toolkit gives you full access to all of Wikidata or all of other Wikibase installations you may want to work with. Uh, you can create your own excerpts of the data. You can aggregate them in some way or analyze them in some way. And uh, it also provides you with high-speed random access Offline, you can be on a train and get any item with any data if you have five gigabytes of, of hard disk available to store it. So this is all not, not so bad, I guess. Uh, so stay tuned. We will have more releases. Maybe in one or two months, this will all be prime time ready. And if you are interested, just uh, contact us and we will be happy to provide some answers. Thank you very much. Well, if I, well, this is preloaded from disk, really. I mean, it's not quite fair to compare something yeah, it's, it's not fair, file. No, no, if I preload this into memory, it will also do it in best yeah, settings. Yeah, no, sure. I mean, yeah. But uh, an important thing is that in Magnus' database, actually not all the items are present, for example. Not the labels, not the site links, and uh, so the not items, the references. The items are all there, the la labels are not there. OK, fair enough.
is my first Wikimania, so I'm going to first take a selfie. Stop coughing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, so I'm Morris. Uh, this is Steven. And that's Dario. Um, we work at the Media Foundation, and uh, we're going to talk about Data and Um So Data and Hub uh, started as a as a pet project uh, for all three of us. Really, uh, we're all in diverse teams, and and none of us had some job. Uh, and uh, I want to make sure that uh, we can all uh, get together <coughs> and like clap on this one. Can I? Can I? No, 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 wants to like you know engage developers like you know as best as he can. Um, and you have to wonder why you know a, a corporate CEO wants to engage you know a community of developers, right? And it's because it's might not be about the community, it's about growing the platform, right? Like the developers are a way to grow your user base, to grow the people who uh, use your products. And that's something that, that we share as well. Even if we have a very different mission or a very different ultimate goal, uh, we're still trying to grow Wikipedia. Our mission is to distribute free knowledge, and, and data users and developers can be part of that mission. They have a kind of crucial role to play. We, we face a lot of challenges. We want to make it fun and easy to read and edit Wikipedia, to read and edit our other projects, and data developers and data users should be part of that mission as well. We should be building products that sort of grow our platform and engage more people because it's it's something we want to do just as bad as uh, as sweaty corporate CTOs. Yeah. So um, this is from the web. They they rank um, all the all the web-based APIs uh, uh, basically uh, by how many mashups uh, other people have done using them. And uh, and you can see like you know the top API on on that list is Google Maps. The second one is Twitter. Uh, I'm just listening to my part of the right now. Uh, but you know, third, a third is YouTube. We have Flickr on there. We have Facebook. We have all of the, these other giants there. And Wikipedia is here at the bottom. And uh, and I and we wonder why. And I think and one of the reasons why that is is because uh, because at times our our you know documentation uh, you know the accessibility of it and the and the findability of it uh, you know could could be made better. Another good example is is, uh, is this is this is Code Academy. Uh, uh, I, how much, uh, actually, how many of you know Code Academy? Cool, awesome. Uh, so yeah, so they're so they're a site where uh, people go and like learn how to code. Uh, you know, on people of all ages, and uh, and they have you know different tr uh, tracks. They they have uh, and and one of the tracks is uh, is the API track, and they actually feature. Other other you know APIs uh, that are that are that are accessible out there and are easy to use and well and well documented, um, you know because and then they and they basically take their their uh, you know on, on students you know through those those APIs and and teach them how to use it and uh, and you know you see YouTube here you see Box here you see SoundCloud you see GitHub you see Twilio you you, you even see NPR I don't know if you know know what NPR is. Uh, you see Sonic Foundation, which is which is an open source project, of, you know, a nonprofit. Uh, you see Twitter. Um, you see Bitly. You know, you see all these other things that I've never heard of. You see Evernote, right? But you, but but we don't have Wikipedia on it. You know? And I and I wonder why that is. And I and I think it's the same reason. Um, so so now let's see how how other companies, uh, you know, how other companies, other projects, um, I'm mean, engaged developers. Um, so this is Twitter. Uh, this is uh, developer.twitter.com. Um, uh, you know, 
they 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 almost uh, you know they they put in like you know just as much effort on this page as they would put in on any product page. You know they are highlighting all of these all of these uh, products like you know like like Twitter cards like you know the timeline and stuff that developers and data uh, users can use uh, to you know on their projects. Um, this is SoundCloud. Um, like another amazing example. I'm going to talk talk a bit more about SoundCloud later because I really like their documentation and the way that they do it. It's very succinct. This is also SoundCloud. They're very succinct, amazing examples. Um, this is WordPress, which is an open source project. Same thing. Really nice documentation. Um, you know, this is still WordPress. Uh, you know, great examples. You know, it's visual. It shows you. You know, an interactive uh, um, an example of like, what we will build. Uh, even Reddit, you know, which is not really known for you know usability and design and stuff, even they have put in some effort, you know, on, in their documentation. Um, so, and let's see how we do it. How uh, you know how the Wikimedia projects do it, right? This is it. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of really cool features and you can actually do a lot more comparatively what you can do on our API versus our actual website. Wikipedia is awesome, right? It's like so much better than a lot of the APIs you just saw. But it's being explained without images, it's being explained with uh, inconsistent examples. If you click the example links in a lot of these, they, they don't even work, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's the problem of having just a very large API that does a lot of things. It's hard to do that in a like, good consistent way. Yeah, so this wall of text just keeps going on. Um, this is this is our API sandbox. Another very cool, you know, piece of thing. Uh, you know, I love using it. I love I love playing with it. But it's but it's still not that findable. Uh, you know, it's it's buried like within you know media wiki pages. Um, this is uh, the data dumps uh, that we that we have, and this is the experience. You you go on this page, you you click on a link. You get to this directory page, you know, and then you have to download, and you have no idea what you're downloading right now. Yeah, yeah, language. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and, this, and then you cancel, and then you then you get get out. Of it. Um, I, I was sort of curious if you Google Wikipedia data, if you're just trying to find some Wikipedia data, you find that you end up on this dump page. There's no explanation. You don't get onboarded onto the API. You don't get to that cool API sandbox we just saw. You end up here. So. Um, Back in 2011, I think, uh, we ran this small consultation. It's already a survey, so it's not a representative sample of uh, researchers or uh, data researchers. It's really a way for us to understand how people are using our data, what are they finding we're looking for, and what are the most popular, popular data sources. And it still strikes me that the, uh, the answer to this question, if you ever had intention to use WMF data sets, but eventually decided not to, what was the reason that stopped you from using them? Uh, the most popular answer was uh, I don't know if this data existed. Uh, so we have plenty of data, which would be the top uh, open data uh, shop of the planet, but the most engaged researchers and data users have no clue where to find this data. So I think that's a pretty compelling data point that we should consider. Um, now, when we look at the breakdown of what the, these, these people use most frequently, uh, obviously uh, XML dumps are at the top. Now, XML dumps are a fantastic resource, and not necessarily the most user-friendly one. So you need to uh, download terabytes of data to know how to process a dump. And if you go back to the previous uh, answers, you'll see that uh, uh, a very popular answer for not using WMF data set is that people didn't have enough processing resources. So uh, if we only pitch the XML dumps our main uh, data source, uh, we're basically not making it easy for people to reuse our data. So uh, let me talk about uh, maybe talk to you know developers uh, from 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 all different backgrounds you know different skill levels and stuff. Uh, they basically have three different needs, and uh, you know and they're very simple needs. And, and I will do, we will go through them and we will we will uh, show how how others do it and how maybe we can learn from them. Um, the first need is is to have a clear and accessible you know place where there's a documentation for like variety of skill levels. Um, and this is, and I, and, I, and I love the SoundCloud documentation, I keep coming back to it. Uh, this is how they do it. And, and look at how the little tiny details, like, like the table of contents on the side, uh, the visual examples, uh, it's very succinct, well written, uh, how it shows you where you are on the page um, among the table of contents. 
It has different languages, uh, you know, uh, different color standards in different languages. So you know, no matter what your background is, you can, you know, you can come and contribute and, and join the join the project. It's interactive. Like you can actually play around with the API in the documentation while you're reading that. Like place it's not. Uh, the second need that we've identified is that uh, there needs to be a sandbox uh, for where uh, users can play around and generate new ideas. And I think uh, you know, on, on our sandbox is great technically, and uh, uh, and it's, but but I think we need to work on it a bit more uh, to make it usable, friendlier. Um, one good example is is this Redis thing, right? It's just a like you know Rebel, like you know client, like you know, and uh, you you try something out, you load a tutorial, it gives you some you know, instructions, and then you can play around with it. And it's interactive and it's, and it's responsive. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't really work with Redis, but but even I can, like, you know, understand what was going on. So not only do we have to uh, um, make our own sandbox better, but also I think we should have uh, Wikipedia be connected. With Wikipedia and Wikipedia and Wikimedia data dumps and you know, the other resources that we have connected to all these other platforms that are out there that help uh, people make things. Uh, and, and one of the good examples is, is Ift. Uh, how many of you know Ift? Cool, okay. Uh, so yeah, so if you search, uh, so, so Ift is a place where you can uh, you know, glue APIs together, make, make little like, you know, projects. Uh, so if you search Wikipedia, uh, let's see what happens. So you search Wikipedia, you click search, and a lot of projects come up, and uh, so a lot of people are using, um, you know, our data sources, and uh, and you know they're trying to make these cool small things. But uh, if you go, but they're not uh, because we are helping them. To. I mean, even you can see like you know like like our logo is not represented. Uh, like you're, and yeah, like if, if you look at all these, there's like a widget for Gmail and there's a widget for. So you just plug Twitter into if that and this if, and Wikipedia you can use Wikipedia, but you have to plug it into our RSS feed. You have to know how to find the right you know special page to give you the random page you want. And people are making it work, but not with any particular help. Like they're not getting a, a, a Wikipedia plugin as simple as Gmail does it. Um, and there's really like a big need for it because people have done like ten pages worth of cool things. So the third big need is. Is that there needs to be, you know, a showcase of, you know, the best projects out there that our community has built using our resources, um, and because, you know, then it, then it, you know, inspires other projects, you know, you know, popping up. Um, so this is a great project. I mean, I mean, Stephen was involved in it. Uh, this is called Listen to Wikipedia. How many of you know about it? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so, so these are edits happening, is that what it is? Yeah, so th this is just based off the, the live stream of new edits coming off of Wikipedia. Yeah, there's, there's a number of different people who have done this. I think uh, recently people used the live edit stream to have Twitter accounts that announced when certain people were uh, editing anonymously thing on Wikipedia. There's a lot of cool things you can do with our live edit stream. And it's like live and interactive, right? So people see it reflecting what's going on right now, which makes it super engaging. Um, and most people wouldn't even think that that's available because you can't get that from those services, right? And and this is C also also something that that Stephen was involved in. Yeah, so this this sort of came from a, an idea Dario had, just just categorizing and chronicling a lot of the cool projects that we were passing around that had to do with Wikipedia data. Um, and we tried to do it in sort of a visual way. Um, we tried to keep track of where they got their data from, uh, the people who were doing it. You see a lot of common names in all these projects. Um, and Nair exactly has a has an awesome page like this as well that uh, we, we link to at the bottom. But there's there's like a lot of cool uh, examples of how Wikipedia data can be used. But those are separate from inviting people to actually use our data, and that's also separate from explaining how to use that data. Yeah. So so a showcase like this, you know, which is amazing, should be part of this data developer. Um, and should be and should be curated. Should be should 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 inspire all of us to you know build new things. Should should also take you into like you know weird you know pathways and directions to like figure out how that project was built. You know what services was used. Uh, so you can build your own. So we have some early sketches 
of uh, what the data and Bubble Hub could look like. These are, I mean, all three of these sketches were made last night, so you know, they were probably not that perfect. Um, but, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, it could look something like this. It could be, you know, a place, nice, clean, like, you know, website uh, that has a showcase, has some documentation. Um, you know, when you click on a project from one of the showcases, it has this editorial page where it shows you actually what uh, oops, what data sources are used and what APIs are used, and then you can explore those. Uh, you know, it has photos, pictures. Um, I mean, this is one of the the pages for for an API. Uh, and this is the recent changes stream, which is which is a cool new thing that uh, that Ori is involved in from from, from the foundation. Uh, you know, the table of contents could come up, so you know where you are. Uh, I mean, I should also mock up, like, you know, examples, how we're going to show code snippets and stuff, and that, that will do too. Um, but this is just a proof of concept, right? This, we, are, we are still, you know, just starting on this, and, you know, as you can tell from the, from the mocks. And, uh, and we desperately need your help. Uh, and, and you can all come, uh, you can all visit the media we uh, and, and, you know, there's a lot more information about this project there, and we would love to hear from you. Because uh, there's a lot of you know, um, open questions that we would like your, your input on. Um, and these are some of those, right? So, so what do you use right now? What do you, what do you need from us? Uh, have you ever used a Wikipedia data dumps? What libraries do you use? What languages do you use? Um, have you ever used um, an OAuth? Uh, what's, what's your favorite Wikimedia you know, data related projects uh, you know, that, that a community member made? Uh, so actually, I would put that slide up there just so it could serve as a reminder, and I would actually open up for discussion. Yeah, uh, I, I run a service, a tool uh, from my server, and, and I can't save edits to Wikipedia. Uh, I use the, the API for uh, downloading data, and there's an API for saving edits. And uh, my the IP range of my server is, is blocked. Okay, that is someone has blocked the whole range, and they. I requested that it be unlocked, uh, and they said this IP range belongs to servers, people yeah. don't edit the service from their home accounts. Yeah. Yeah. I can give you my phone number, you can call me, I'll unblock it right away. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that, that's an issue for uh, API users. Sure. So, I Part of that just illustrates one of the difficulties we're, we're all going to have to face, right? Like we have a technical level of interacting with Wikipedia, which we can solve by making examples that are easy to use and sort of doing it the same way uh, you know, Twitter and other organizations do it. But we also have kind of a social level, right? And that social level means you have to interact with users in a respectful way, and you have to sort of be aware of this community that we're entering into, right? So I, I don't know what project you've walked on. I, we can talk about it later and try to figure out exactly why this is the case, but you, we're all gonna have to kind of figure out ways to like be respectful of the communities we enter to make sure that this is something we can open up for more people. I think it's possible, but it's gonna be, a, it's like, something to think about this. Please. Um, this, maybe this is too much in depth for this problem now, but um, <coughs> in theory, you can get your account exempt from the empty range box, so you, when you log in, you can send it. So I don't know anyone use any account. No, they use their own accounts. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the network. There, there are technical solutions, yeah. right? Yeah, my, my plan was that works for single projects. That does not work across projects, as far as I know, and that is a problem with single sign-on. Yeah. So, when you guys talk, it's not especially the data dumps. Data dumps are not linked with uh, open source, other projects that are in the media. There's uh, a lot of other stuff that can link with the dumps internally. And uh, interfacing dumps, specifically dumps, and parts of those dumps with let's say the media or freebase becomes real challenge. And you have to kind of do it offline. If I were to go and develop something, that can take, let's say, uh, take an article from the Wikipedia dump itself, link it to the Wikipedia, let's say, and uh, link it to free base entries as well. Is there a way that we could actually start building that from the community rather than one person trying to go and build a project around it? So let's say we have a GitHub or, or, a, or a GitBucket repository that we could go and you know, keep, uh, contribute to. Uh, oh, okay. So that's our data dump expert. Right. Uh, you, you know, I, I think the uh, okay. sure the question basically um, depends to be right. Uh, basically, we have all these uh, 
uh, different data sources, and it's uh, really hard to even find the tools to uh, uh, crunch them in a consistent way. And I think one possible proposal would be to create, uh, we, we don't have a, uh, let's say, a, a GitHub organization or some way of finding you know, popular uh, you know, platform for developers, uh, all the tools uh, that you can use to basically uh, crunch this data. So I think uh, a couple, there, there, are, there are a few pages where people um, will collect uh, tools. That's right. Them. But so, I mean, this suffer from the same problem that there are basically wiki pages uh, that are kind of hard, hard to find. They're often distributed across three or four wikis. Um, and uh, so I think the, the program we're going here with data sources also applies to libraries that you can use to crunch this data. So my, my thing is that this approach could help us with these solve uh, both problems. Yeah, please. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I do tons of stuff, uh, lots of these data sources. One concern that I have is re very related to this. It's this idea that there are many different data sources and that, and, that, and that actually getting reasonable results or answering questions like require like under, like reading across differences between the way in which things are recorded in different spaces. So Darian and I talked about this yesterday, but um, like one big issue is like view data, like the way in which redirects are handled, uh, are handled, they're different in the API, or different in the dumps, and are different in the view data. If you actually want to, <coughs> and the way, and, and page views for page moves and redirects are not noted at all in the dumps. Um, and so, like, if you want to make, if you want to connect, like, what people are doing to what they're seeing over time, you actually need to. I don't think anyone's ever done it correctly, um, uh, and because it would require actually at least three or four different data sources which are recording information in different ways. And so thinking of some way to help put that together through, I don't know, like a single API or at least through a set of libraries that we could use would be, uh, would, would not only make new kinds of analysis and questions possible, but would help people who are doing existing work probably incorrectly in ways that we don't really all, always understand uh, much, much easier. So. Yeah, a quick follow up on that. So um, I think so. Our, our, um, our data sources are amazing, and they came out in many cases from volunteer experts. So this is no way uh, to like a blaming. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah but, absolutely. But, but so what's interesting to me is the fact that uh, all of these data sources were produced as a byproduct of uh, mostly development work. So the DAPs initially were not supposed to support, support research. We were supposed to allow you to wrap it to. Uh, for can we create uh, the full of these products? And it's by product that became like uh, the most used uh, resource for researching. Um, you could say the same with other other uh, social media. So they grew organically out of uh, I think development needs, and now we're getting to a point where there's really a need to have a well curated, well defined data sources, documented but also clean, so that we don't have to know about uh, wiki archaeology. We have a, a side project analytics team to try and help uh, avoid uh, the pain of learning about the fact that the login table back in 2005 and 6 uh, called registration a different way than in 2007, right? So um, I think that's part of the problem, like uh, uh, publishing data sources that are uh, from the get-go uh, targeted to people who do research and not just as a byproduct of the And also, like, you know, community members like you can, can build examples. Because you guys are, you know, because because the problems that, that that you are trying to solve, other people are, are clearly also trying to solve. The problem is that so I have done that, and I've released data sets and I've yeah. used tools. No, but they need to be on on this, like you know, I'm like putting them on the wikis. But there's a yeah. sense in which I also think that I'm sort of aggravating the problem because part <laughs> of what I'm doing is I'm creating even additional data sets, and they and they and they solve new problems. But now there's yet another thing you need to take into account, and I build new tools, and that's great. And I put them on the list, but now the list of tools is even a little bit longer, um, and <laughs> okay, to get another thing. And um, and so I, I, I don't know what I'm asking for here. <laughs> we're gonna have to block here, right? Yeah. So all, the most we can do is give you some context, right? We can like put all the stuff you're doing in a little bit bigger picture, and hopefully that'll make it easier for other people to like engage, right? So yeah. I would like to have um, an issue from the, the other side. For for Wikipedia, we have uh, created a new type of dump. A JSON based dump, um, which now finally um, we actually managed to find out how to integrate that kind of with the infrastructure. But it's, I think it is now actually automatically generated, but still not on the main dump page because there's just no standard way to get it in there. It's like somewhere else you kind of have to go through it all. Um, and we also have a um, 
to then install N API like entry points. So the, the link data, um, I think data interface where you can get search on data directly. Cool. But it's not discoverable. It's not linked. It's not how do we integrate this? And um, it's a bit unclear. Okay, there are wiki pages. I think we're wiki page that's written by now, but that's maybe not the best way. Yeah. Actually, how many of you uh, are developers? And how many of you have used uh, Wikipedia data streams or dumps or something else like that for our API? <coughs> cool. And uh, how many of you have enjoyed using the documentation and, and those <laughs> sorts of things? <laughs> well, <that> one, <laughs> come, come work with us. Okay. <laughs> we need to, yeah. I've, I've taught it. Um, <laughs> just cool. Actually, the self API is really cool. Of course, yes. Yes, no, no, we're not saying that the self-documenting API is, is not cool at all. It's really cool. When something changes in code, it appears live immediately. It's incredible. But, uh, you know, it needs a little bit of work. <laughs> yeah, please. So what do you think about the next steps? Because some of the features you show are not possible in the API. Sure. So we have to need yeah. a platform for the communication. Yeah. What is the set in the new uh, yeah. format in the need? Yeah. What are the next steps? So within the foundation, we are we are exploring all these questions right now. Uh, we're still in the right, right at the beginning of the stage. Uh, yeah, and this is a big project. This is a big undertaking, I think. And we have to like build all these foundational elements too, maybe you know, because we have all these like you know good documentation, but it's just scattered around everywhere. We should like you know combine that. You know, maybe we write some of that. Um, yeah, we need to work on it. And I think uh, to stress or more specific question about uh, priorities. Um, I think coming up with a, a proof concept of a well-structured documentation, uh, tapping what's already, for example, on the uh, is going to be the first step. So we can decouple, for example, the Inspire side, which is a kind of modular, right? All this showcase doesn't need to be built. It is not blocked for documentation, but I think we have top priorities to have a, one example of well-written, complete, static documentation that we can, we can use and we can others. And I think the, the best approach here is so we have a wiki page that sort of outlines the idea a little bit. And the best approach is going to be to start like piecemeal, right? We start with one API and we try and see what we can do to put some context around that as libraries and um, its, its uses and documentation and then sort of work out from there. But, uh, but as we said at the beginning, this, this has started off as a side project. So we're still sort of exploring exactly where it's going to go. Um, and if you check on the, the media wiki page, you can see some directions. Yeah, Kim, I just want to say, if you follow that URL that they were showing, uh, from there you have a link to the project where there's already open tasks. We're asking for feedback. Uh, you can propose uh, all kinds of tasks. So, so there's already an opportunity to get involved on actual work and uh, yeah. get into the video. Follow yeah. this URL. And talk to Kim. Kim is awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. So I don't know if you consider this, but uh, would you also provide some So I, I think that's uh, uh, that is totally right. So um, I think the right model is to make it clear that uh, we have uh, official data sources and official contained services infrastructure from the foundation, um, but also list uh, all community contributed libraries of pension data. I think the best example that I've seen is the, uh, uh, the Flickr API documentation, where you have uh, both a list of uh, you know methods from the, from the API, but also a list of uh, wrappers and libraries that come from the community that are all documented and maintained uh, on the same place. Cool. Uh, we have one more minute. Uh, so that's our Twitter IDs. You can throw questions at us and yell at us and stuff. Um, that's the that's the Wikimedia, that's the Wikimedia uh, project page uh, that Kim was talking about and. And we are all maintaining it. And we are all updating it, uh, you know, very frequently uh, with all the updates uh, from the project. And if any would like, we would love uh, to uh, to get your your input on it. Thank you.